Hi folks, so I recently purchased a Chevy Bolt EUV and friends have been asking me about my impressions so this is a quick review after my first 500 miles. For those of you who want me to just cut to the chase, uh, the vehicles thus exceeded all my expectations for daily commuting where I live here in Tucson, Arizona. Before I share my observations, first a little bit of background on me, my driving habits, and why I made this purchase. I live in Tucson, Arizona and drive a 2005 Honda CRV that has served me well over the years. With close to 250,000 miles on the odometer, this has been my primary commuter for local errands, taking the kids to school, and occasional trips to Los Angeles. On average, I drive about 45 miles a day, and although the CRV has been well maintained and continues to run beautifully, I'm getting to that point in my life where regular oil changes, unexpected mechanical maintenance issues, and fueling at the pump is something I'd like to leave in the rearview mirror. I consider the various hybrids offered by Toyota, Honda, and the Model Y offered by Tesla. And in my opinion, the CRV was the quietest, delivered the best handling, and had the smoothest driving of the three on bad roads here in Tucson. I also consider the Tesla Model Y. I sincerely admire Elon Musk setting the table for the EV revolution and know I would enjoy driving a Tesla, but I didn't give this serious consideration given the significantly higher cost, not only for the vehicle, but also for insurance. In addition, many of the luxury features that Teslas are known for, like autopilot, are frankly things I just don't need in a daily commuter. I eventually placed a deposit on a hybrid CRV, which wasn't in stock at the time, but after giving it some thought, I just couldn't justify the sticker price for a vehicle that would still require regular mechanical maintenance, oil changes, and fueling at the pump, all of which are minimized or eliminated altogether in a pure EV outside of tire rotations. To be clear, I mean no offense to those of you who drive CRVs. I love mine and Honda makes a great product, but I just don't want to deal with anything gas-powered requiring regular oil changes if I can avoid it. The Chevy Bolt EUV came onto my radar when I saw it was eligible for a $7,500 federal tax credit in 2023, making it one of the most affordable EVs on the market. After seeing the multitude of positive reviews online, I visited my local dealer, Watson Chevrolet here in Tucson, and spoke with three different salespeople for a test drive. They all promised to call me when one would come in, but unfortunately the calls never came. I assume because of the low margins on the vehicle that's low in supply and frankly high in demand. I wasn't impressed with the customer service and eventually reached out to the sales manager. He put me in touch with his quote, top salesman, Mike Dew. Mr. Dew was easy to work with, communicated with me regularly regarding availability and status, and eliminated all the high pressure sales tactics for upgrades and add-ons. He knew what I wanted and he promised to deliver the same for a fixed price, no further questions asked. This is something I wasn't expecting and have to acknowledge that Mr. Dew saved the sale for Chevrolet. In response, I ordered a bare bones Bolt EUV in white with a sticker price of 28,000 and change. It took about three months, but the Bolt EUV finally arrived and I accepted delivery in late July. Just a heads up that when the vehicle arrived, I was notified it might already have tinting and door protection applied such that the price might have to be adjusted by $1,000. I replied, no thanks, I'm in no rush, so just let me know when what I originally ordered comes in. Fortunately, no tinting or door protections were added and the vehicle was delivered exactly as it had been ordered. When I met with the finance department, I was offered an extension on the warranty for an extra $2,200. I know this is formulaic of any dealership, uh, and I decline knowing that the engineers at Chevrolet have the failure rates and equipment dialed in. Upon declining, the price of the warranty dropped to the, quote, employee's cost of only $1,800, which I also declined. After taxes, delivery, and registration, the final cost was $32,000 for the bare bones model. Factoring in the tax credit, I'll end up paying about $25,000, which in my humble opinion is reasonable for a brand new vehicle, in addition to being an EV with decent range, and thousands less than what I might pay for an alternative, comfortable, quiet, and smooth driving vehicle like this one. 
I won't repeat what's already been shared by many others in online reviews regarding cabin space, interior design, and excellent range, but I will share some of my own observations, recommendations, and questions for new Bolt EUV owners like me who've never owned an electric vehicle before. As I mentioned, I avoided purchasing any add-ons through the dealer, preferring to do my own research regarding what best suits my needs. To begin with, I purchased 3D Max Spider floor mats, given the positive reviews for custom fit, ease of installation, and durability in muddy or wet conditions. The floor mats were more expensive than a generic set purchased at my local auto shop, but they really do fit like a glove in the 2023 model, taking only a few minutes to install and also appear to be quite durable. For window tinting, I went with 3M Crystalline given its improved heat reduction capabilities relative to ceramic tints when the car is sitting in traffic. I'll admit this was a very expensive purchase and maybe more than you need for your own particular conditions. But considering where I live in Arizona, my goal is to relieve pressure on the battery for AC cooling on hot summer days. Towards that end, I also included tinting on the front window, which should help where I live in the desert. To begin with, I'm acutely aware of the impact that manufacturing a new car can have on the environment. This is the reason I'm still maintaining and driving my CRV with close to 250,000 miles on the odometer. In this regards, I know the environmental payoff of purchasing a new EUV is going to take some time, so just like my CRV, my goal is to keep the Chevy Bolt in good working order for the long haul. The way I'm doing this is by setting the charge rate to max out at 75% of battery capacity when charging from home, and I'm also discharging the battery down to about 40% before plugging it in. For my daily 40 mile commutes, I've had no issues doing this, even at the very slow level 1 charging on a 110 volt outlet, which I start after 7pm to avoid overtaxing the electrical grid during peak demand hours. On that note, I should mention that Chevy will pay for the installation of a level 2 charger in my home, at least up to the first thousand dollars. I filled out the paperwork for the same and I'm told that I'm on the books for installation, but it's been a few weeks since I applied and I'm still waiting for an appointment. Having said that, I haven't missed not having a level 2 charger. Also, when I park the car in public spaces, I try to find an area that's shaded by trees. This should help offset heating of the battery from the hot pavement that's radiating heat upwards to the undercarriage where the battery is located. Needless to say, I keep the car garaged in the shade to once again avoid ambient high temperatures impacting the battery. Now you've probably heard that EVs realize significant acceleration and torque relative to gas-powered vehicles, and in this regards, the Chevy Bolt does not disappoint. I can get into fast-moving highway traffic with no difficulty thanks to the electric motor. Having said that, I don't really have any reason to be stressing out the battery and prefer to keep my acceleration and braking within the green zone recommended by the dashboard for maximum efficiency. In addition, the Chevy Bolt has this really cool one-pedal driving option that allows me to rapidly slow down the car and regenerate the battery simply by removing my foot from the gas. I was a little cautious about this alternative at first, but I absolutely love this feature now since it doesn't waste all the vehicle's momentum that's lost when driving in traffic, which would otherwise translate to heating and wearing down my brake pads. In fact, I've observed that one pedal driving realizes about a 25% increase in my expected miles per kilowatt of battery charge, especially when I'm driving in town. It also increases my focus on driving since I'm acutely aware of regenerative braking distance requirements in traffic. In fact, I rarely have to use my brakes anymore, so that should be less maintenance in the long run. Although my initial impressions are positive, there are a few things that I still need to figure out. For example, sometimes when I start the vehicle, I hear this very loud fan coming from the engine compartment. I'm assuming this fan is kicking in to cool the battery since we're dealing with record-breaking heat waves here in the southwest but it's pretty loud, nowhere near what I would expect from a new or electric vehicle. So this is something I plan on checking up on with the dealer. I'll 
Also, I've had a couple of instances where I've powered on the vehicle, but I can't put it into gear per a message on the dashboard that reads, shifting conditions are not right. This has happened to me a couple times in the first 500 miles of driving this vehicle, regardless of my having the brake firmly depressed as required for powering on and shifting. In these two instances, I've had to repeatedly turn the car off and back on to get that message to reset. With a little patience, it does eventually work out, allowing me to get to my destination. Regardless, it's something I need to be aware of and also be prepared for. Regardless of these minor issues, I found the base model to be comfortable, quiet, and perfect for driving around town. Overall, the car handles great and the suspension is comparable to what I witnessed driving Honda's newest CRV based on my test driving on one of the worst roads in Tucson, specifically Limberlost off of Oracle. The stock sound system sounds great, the AC blows cold, and the vehicle comes with Apple Play, which is perfect for keeping me focused on the road when I want to place a call or dial into some tunes using Siri. I'll continue reviewing the car as I add miles, but for now I'll echo the reviews from others and just say this has been an excellent purchase for me personally. If your own use and needs mirror ours, I'm comfortable recommending this to friends interested in a safe, low-cost EV with decent range, especially if you're looking for something to just drive around town. And I'll post updates as more miles are added on in the coming months and years. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for updates, and I'll catch you next time.